Good morning, evening, afternoon, everyone. I am Dorm, and welcome back to Dorm Film, where we talk about movies. Today, we're going to be talking about Killing of a Sacred Deer. Uh, this movie came out in 2017. It was directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, who I knew from a movie called The Lobster, which is a very strange movie starring Colin Farrell. Coincidentally, this movie, also a very strange movie starring Colin Farrell. So the interesting thing about this review is I don't want to get super into the plot. Um, I came into this movie pretty much not knowing anything at all. I didn't even watch a trailer because as I get older, for some reason, that's just something I like doing. If someone recommends me a movie, I will pretty much just straight up watch it as opposed to going to a trailer or looking up a plot synopsis or anything like that. I like going into a movie as no knowledge as possible. And I would suggest, at least for my preference, you do the same. Uh, what I will say is this movie centers around a family. Uh, Colin Farrell is the dad, Nicole Kidman is the mom, and the kids are also wonderful. Rafi Cassidy uh, plays the daughter, and then Sonny Soljic, Soljic, who I knew from mid-90s, which I've not seen, but I've just seen the trailers for, um, are, is the son. And basically the idea of the movie is you don't really know what's going on, it's a very like dropped along plot, uh, kind of kind of leaving a, a breadcrumb kind of plot, uh, which I really enjoyed. It kept me kind of captivated into the movie. But th the basic idea of a movie, it is a thriller. It's it's sort of a stranger in the home kind of thing. That stranger is played by Barry, Barry Keegan, who is also in Dunkirk. He's done a lot of stuff, but this was one of his, his first real acting jobs. And he is so captivating in this movie in a lot of different ways. Some of them good, some of them bad. As, I mean, he's brilliant. I'm just saying like his character wise, he is so good for this and it's hard to imagine. You can imagine pretty much most actors in any role in this movie, except for Barry Keegan, I would argue. He had to be, uh, he had to be the, the person in this role for me. So this movie is gonna be one of those ones that I think is, is a very polarizing movie. I think either people are really gonna love it or people are just not going to like it and it's not going to click. And I think both of those responses are absolutely valid because this movie comes off as very auteur. Um, it's a very artisty movie, very art house, very indie. And I personally love that kind of thing. I admittedly have an art degree. I went to art school. So I totally get <laughs> that this might be more up my alley than some other people's. Um, and I think that's absolutely fine. I really like Yorgos Lanthimos. Uh, I really love The Lobster. I think The Lobster is a slightly better movie than this but this movie has so much to give. One of the unique things about the way Yorgos makes movies, his dialogue is very deadpan. I mean, people have called this his style, basically. People have referred to him as, as having a deadpan style, uh, almost to the point where it feels like the actors are just reading the script for the first time as they're saying the lines. It's very, very one tone, sort of surreal feeling. And I think normally it would be viewed as bad acting. I think because it's so deliberate here, I think it adds to the entire surrealness of his world. So The Lobster is a very experimental world to be built in. This movie is kind of a similar thing, not to the extent of The Lobster, but there's a lot of stuff going on that is just completely weird. Um, and I think a lot of stuff adds to that weird feeling. This movie feels tense from the minute go, even though you don't know what you're supposed to be tense about. Um, a big part of that is the score. The music in this movie is very, very intense to the point where one of my small criticisms of it is that it relies too heavily on the music for some tense moments. Uh, I liked the sort of overbearing, oh God, what's gonna happen moments, but I think Unlike a Trent Reznor score in Gone Girl, which I think is beautifully subtle in when it brings those moments in, I think this movie is just a tad overkill with it. And maybe that was the point. Um, again, maybe that was the entire filmmaking vision. But for me personally, it played a little too overkill for, for the tone of the movie. Another thing that adds to the uncomfortability to this, of this movie that I think is done perfectly is the way the movie is shot. Uh, there are a lot of really surreal angles in this movie. For example, there's a conversation happening between Colin Farrell and Barry Keegan's characters where they are uh, walking along like a dock or like just like a side road next to a river. And instead of just shooting them head on or even like, you know, in a third of the screen, a lot of the conversation takes place from like underneath them looking up their sort of up their chin and nose. It's such a weird angle and it completely makes a scene that otherwise might seem sort of just to move the plot along, it feels so weird. Um, another thing this movie does that I really love is it feels like you're spying on the family uh, throughout the whole film or just spying on everyone in the film. This is something that the Bourne movies do really, really well. 
Um, it's sort of that over the shoulder, we're gonna shoot the dialogue from way back here. It's done to an extreme in this movie where we're going to see people through doorways and we're going to slowly enter the room as the camera and uh, we're gonna watch people through windows and just, it feels like you're spying on them the whole time. And I think that also adds to the uncomfortability and just sort of weird detached feeling from this family and from these characters and really from the story. I think the the pacing of the movie is really interesting. I would describe Yorgos's films almost as Cormac McCarthy-like. Uh, Cormac McCarthy, who wrote The Road and several other books, uh, famously doesn't really use punctuation outside of like in-sentence punctuation. So no commas, no semicolons, no parentheses, anything like that. So when you first read a Cormac McCarthy novel, it sort of feels very strange. And it's like, okay, it's gonna take a while for me to even get into the groove of what this is. In the same breath, Yorgos Lanthimos has that sort of staccato style where each scene just ends and it goes to the next and it ends and it goes to the next. A lot of people might find that jarring. I didn't find that it messed with the flow of the movie at all. Just an interesting note on how the movies are pieced together. Overall, this is a thriller. So again, I don't want to get too much into the plot. I really liked the way the plot unravels. Um, in this movie, there are some really surreal elements going on, but unlike in a normal setting where I would where I would be like, well, how in the world does this exist? I'm very questioning and want to know the reasoning behind most things. Because I know Yorgos' filmmaking style and also because the entire thing feels like an artist's complete rendering of something, just sitting food on a plate and going, here, eat it. I don't really have those questions. I think they do a good job of, of answering motivation questions without sort of answering the the absolutes, the details of things. And I think that's absolutely okay. I think it's almost more fun not having it explained. I would equate it to um, like a zombie film. This isn't a zombie film, but it'd be very interesting if it were. Uh, this isn't a zombie film, but in zombie films, it's not the actual existence of zombies that are fun because we've seen that a hundred times. It's the stories of the people around those zombies, right? It's the stories of those in that scenario. Something kind of similar is happening here where it's not the actual circumstances of the event, it's how the event is affecting the family. So that I really, really like. Uh, it's very strange. This film is not going to be for everyone. I personally really like it. Like I said, I gave The Lobster is, is one of my favorite, like really artistic auteur kind of crazy films that I've seen. And Killing of a Sacred Deer is just a little bit behind it because ultimately I think The Lobster is a little bit easier to describe uh, I think it's a little easier to pitch to friends like, hey, here's this crazy plot of if you don't get married by a certain age, then you get turned into an animal. I think that's enough interest to get most people in the door and that's not a spoiler. With this, it's a little harder to explain because I think the interesting part of the movie is kind of the reveal of the movie. So I, I don't want to spoil that going in. I also think this movie is kind of hard to pin down genre wise and that way, uh, and The Lobster sort of is too. Yorgos's work reminds me of Bong Joon-ho, director of Parasite. Uh, who once said that he wanted the audience to feel every emotion over the course of a movie. Uh, this movie is the perfect example of that. There are moments I laughed at. There's moments that are very dark comedy. There's moments that are just straight up weird and funny, like just in like a jarring way. Uh, there are moments that I absolutely winced at and was like hiding behind a blanket trying to watch it. And I think there's a lot of stuff in between. I really like that in films. I understand that for some people, having a genre defined is easy, right? And I'm not saying you're not challenging yourself if you want, if you want to go watch a comedy. I love all genres of, of movies. I'm not trying to disparage the idea of having genres, but I understand for some people, genreless movies, genreless filmmaking can be frustrating in that way, right? You go in expecting something and you get something else. That was the main critique I saw of Parasite, a movie that I think is one of the best 10 movies of the last decade. I, that's kind of the biggest critique I heard from friends and people who watched it who didn't like it. They really just didn't know what to call it. At the end of the day, this movie is similar, but I really like it. As I said, this movie is not gonna be a movie that I think people are giving threes uh, out of five. I think most people are either gonna give it like a two or a four. I fall on the later end of that spectrum, so I'm giving Killing of a Sacred Deer a four out of five stars. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to leave it a like and hit subscribe. There's gonna be a lot more dorm film coming your way. Uh, I'm really enjoying this series and it's very fun for me to just sit down in front of my computer for 20 minutes and gush about movies. Without them, none of this YouTube stuff would be possible. Thank you so much, patrons. Uh, also, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash dormstreams. I stream multiple times a week. That's sort of the main 
hub of this whole thing. Uh, so if you want to come talk about movies you're watching, I normally stream at the nighttime uh, on the Eastern Time Zone in the US. So come talk about movies, come talk about games. And uh, until then, we'll see you next time. Bye.